So let's talk about ethylene. Ethylene has this has this molecular format where you have a carbon-carbon double bond, and then each carbon is going to have two hydrogens coming off of that. Okay. So that's the compound that we're going to shoot for now. So we talked about how we form four bonds that are all the same size, that have all the same energy, but now how do you form a double or a triple bond? So that's the question that we're asking in this video. All right, so let's talk about ethylene. So with ethylene, each carbon will have three electron pairs. Okay, so again, just like Vesper theory, we're gonna assume, we're gonna treat the, that double bond as if it's a single bond. Okay, so in that case, we have three electron pairs. The shape is trigonal planar, and that means the angles are 120 degrees. All right, so using 2s and 2p by themselves won't get us these shapes, so we need to make some more hybrids. So what we're going to do is we're going to hybridize a 2s orbital and two 2p orbitals to produce three sp2 hybrid orbitals. Okay, and that means we'll still have a p orbital left over, and we'll use that p orbital to make the double bond. And that double bond is going to be perpendicular to the plane of the molecule. Okay, so I know I just wrote that out in words, what we're going to do. Let's talk about this in pictures. So I'm going to go back to our drawing piece of paper. Let's check this out. So what I'm going to do, here's the electronic configuration of carbon. 1s, 2s, 2p. And remember, you've got this. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So to get, rid, get around the problem that we did last time, we promoted an electron from 2s to 2p. So you had this. 1s, 2s, and then 2p. You had 1s2, 2s1, 2p3. Okay. So we're going to still do that. Now, the only thing is, in the last time, we took all the 2p orbitals and the 2s orbitals, mixed them up, and we got the sp3 hybridized orbitals. So this time, what we're going to do is mix only two of the 2p's and the 2s. So we form this new hybrid orbital called sp2, where you have one part s and then two parts p. Okay, so what this would look like, the new electronic configuration is still 1s2, you're going to have three of these two sp2 orbitals where you're going to have three unpaired electrons and then you still have an electron in 2p. So these will be used to form, the hybrid orbitals will be used to form the single bonds. Okay, the 2p is going to be used to form the double or to form the second bond. All right, so... Before we go any further in the story, I got to use some terminology. And this is going to be coming up a lot more in organic chemistry. So I'm going to I I'm going to introduce this now so that way you guys know what I'm talking about, but you know, keep in mind as you go forward, these are you'll know you'll be working with these a lot more. So in organic chemistry, we 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 refer to a single bond as a sigma bond. And we represent a sigma bond with the lowercase sigma, Greek symbol sigma. Okay. So a single bond is called a sigma bond. And a pi bond, which we use the Greek symbol pi, that's going to be, we form this from overlapping p orbitals. And 
and so that's going to be that that's going to be the part of the double bond. So in order to form a double bond where you have two pairs of electrons, one part is going to be formed from the sp2 o orbital overlapping with another sp2 orbital. And so that's going to be a sigma bond. The other part is going to be a p orbital overlapping with another p orbital, and that gives you the pi bond. So a double bond is going to contain a sigma bond where you have the overlapping hybrid orbitals, and then a pi bond, which is going to be the overlapping p orbitals. Okay, so what this would look like, and I'm going to get crazy, I'm going to try to draw it. So what this would look like, you would have a carbon in the middle. And I'm going to use, let's, let's use a different color for this. Let's use purple, because, just because. So these purple orbitals that I'm drawing, these are the sp2 hybrid orbitals, okay? Now for, I'm going to use the red color. This is going to be the overlapping s orbital from hydrogen, okay? So you've got the carbon-hydrogen bonds. Now we've got that other carbon to contend with. So let me get that, let me, let me put that in. So you got the carbon. All right, so we get the purples again. So each carbon is going to have that sp2 hybridized orbital. Okay. Let me draw in the other two hydrogens. Okay, so the reds are the 1s orbitals from hydrogen. Now that, that p orbital that's going to be overlapping. I'm going to use green for this. And so that p orbital is going to be perpendicular, so it's going to be sticking up and down. And so what happens is that the p orbitals kind of converge, okay? So this is one set of p orbitals, and they kind of converge on each other, okay? So if we were to kind of rotate this molecule, we would actually see the plane of the molecule would be right here. So if we were to, if we were to look at this molecule on its side, this, this molecule would be pretty much flat like a piece of paper, and then all of a sudden you would see this p cloud, or the, the p orbitals overlapping, and you'd see one set of p orbitals. I mean, you would see, like, clouds on either side. Okay, so let's try one more. So let's take a look at acetylene. Acetylene is going to have a carbon-carbon triple bond, and each carbon is going to be connected to one hydrogen. Okay, so according to Vesper theory, the angles should be 180 degrees. Now, we can't use sp3 because that gets us to 109.5 degrees. We can't use sp2 because that gets us to 120 degrees. So we've got to figure out, well, we've, we've got to use something else. And also, because acetylene has a triple bond, we've got to make one of those. Okay. Now, to make a triple bond, we're going to use one sigma bond, and then we're going to use two pi bonds. Okay. So in order to make this happen, we're going to mix, we'll mix one 2s orbital and one 2p orbital. And then that means two 2p orbitals remain untouched. And we'll use those to form the pi bonds. Okay, and then the sp3 orbitals, I'm sorry, the sp hybridized orbitals, will be used to form the sigma bond. I'm not going to write out sigma, let me put this in, uh, Greek letter. Okay. All right, so if we were going to draw this out on a sheet of paper, let me let me get our notes now. Here's the original electronic configuration of carbon. 1s2, 2s2, 2s, 2p2. Okay, so we did the same thing. We're going to promote an electron from 2s to 2p. So that gets us here. 
So you got 1s2, 2s1, 2p3. Okay. So this time, what we're going to do is mix 2s with one of the 2p's, so that way it leaves the other 2p's alone. So you're going to get this. 1s2, you're going to have two sp hybridized orbitals. You have two electrons in there. You're going to have two 2p orbitals left alone. So you're going to use the sp hybridized orbitals to form the sigma bonds, the 2p orbitals to form the pi bonds. So if we're going to draw another orbital uh, drawing of what this looks like, here's your carbons. Okay. The sigma bonds we're going to make in purple. And two of those overlap with a hydrogen. Okay, you're going to have one set of p orbitals. Okay, then you're going to have another set. Let's make this orange this time. That's going to be perpendicular to the plane to everything. So if this is all in the plane, it's almost like this. If the if the purples are the sigmas. Okay. So think of the purple as a straight line. You're going to have the greens overlapping on the top. And then you're going to have the oranges, which I'm going to draw in. They're going to be on either side. So like this. Okay. So I'm going to draw those in. So the oranges overlap and the greens overlap. Now, if I was to rotate this and look at look at the sigma bond, that sigma the sigmas would look like circles. Okay, and so because of this mass, because of the way the p, the the green the p orbitals and the orange p orbitals operate, it almost looks. If you want to think of it this way, some uh, some scientists, uh, some organic chemists, because they have a they have a pretty they have a pretty disturbed sense of humor. Well, all science. Well, uh, anyhow, uh, they call this the hot dog model because the p orbitals. If you want to think of it this way, the p orbitals are the bun, and then the sigmas. That's the hot dog itself. But that's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what we're looking at when we when we're forming double and triple bonds. Okay. So again, remember a triple bond, you have one sigma bond, two pi bonds. And so when you're describing a molecule using valence bond theory, first off, draw the Lewis structure. I can't stress this enough. You've got to draw the Lewis structure. Okay. After that, Determine the arrangement of electron pairs using Vesper theory. You're going to get the bond angles that way. Okay. After that, then you need to specify the hybrid orbitals needed to accommodate the electron pairs. Okay. So before we go on to anything else, that's how we get the shapes. Before we, we move on to other things, that's how we're able to cor you know, correlate the shapes that valence bond theory tells us. Okay, so, so that's how we're able to correlate the electronic configuration with the shapes from valence bond from Vesper theory. But there are so that's how we get linear, that's how we get trigonal planar, and that's how we get tetrahedral. Now, if you remember, if we go back to Vesper theory, there are other shapes as well. Okay, so if you remember, uh, besides tetrahedral, you had Trigonal bipyramidal, where you have five different bonds. And you have octahedral, where you have six different bonds. Where are those coming from? Well, it turns out that you have to hybridize d orbitals as well. Okay? So I'm not, for purposes of this course and what we're doing right now, I'm going to keep things simple. So I'm not going to cover, I'm not going to specifically cover the hybridization of the d orbitals because... Um, you know, if you go on further uh, and you talk about inorganic, that's when you're going to talk about that and a lot more information. But 
But keep in mind to get the other shapes like trigonal bipyramidal and octahedral, you're hybridizing the d orbitals. Okay, so you could have something like sp3d1, sp3d2. Uh, sp3d1 uh, talks about the trigonal bipyramidal. sp3d2 is going to be the octahedral. Again, we're not going to go into too much detail about that. And I'm not going to test you over that. So that, that pretty much is the overview of valence bond theory. But there are some problems with this. Okay, so here's here are some of the problems. So it assumes that the electrons are localized. And what that means is that the electrons are confined to a certain location. Okay, and it doesn't explain resonance. So resonance, if you remember, is when... You have an electron and you can, or a pair of electrons, and you can move them from one place to another without moving the atoms. Okay. We know electrons tend, when resonance is possible, the electrons are going to move. They're not, they're, the electrons are not localized. Valence bond theory, in order to make this work, assumes that the electrons are localized. So we got a problem with that. The other thing is that it does not, valence bond theory does not deal with unpaired electrons. Which, if you remember, back in Vesper theory, we made two. We made two passes. The first pass was without lone pairs, and then we made another pass that used lone pairs. So we've got two major problems to deal with. We need another theory, and that's where molecular orbital theory comes into play. 